What if your own college best friend gave you a drink and of course you would drink it without any hesitations, she's your friend. But what if your own friend wanted to poison you and you soon die after taking a sip? This is named Indonesia's biggest case of the century. But the question still remains as some believe the suspect is actually innocent as there's no firm proof that she did this. What do you guys think after seeing these CCTV footages? I feel like we were just celebrating New Year's and it's already July and super hot. Like what? Where did the time go? You guys know just by hitting the like button on this video really helps me out so much to hit the algorithm And you guys know also by showing love to today's sponsor really helps me to continue making these content And I just want to say thank you so much to function of beauty I've been talking about function of beauty for oh my god. Has it been like a year now? I've been using my custom made shampoo and conditioners for about a year now And as you guys could see my hair has grown so healthy and so long using custom hair care is so important for me because everybody has different hair goals. For example, my profile of my hair is wavy, it's medium, and it's oily. My goals are anti-freeze, color protection, nourish the roots, replenish hair, and volumize. You can also choose your custom fragrance, which I always pick the eucalypts and mint. I have a very sensitive nose, so I get a medium strength, and it's silicone-free for my conditioner. As you guys can see, you could customize all of this, and my hair has always been looking so silky, so volumous. There's no sulfates, parabens, GMOs, toxins, and this 100% vegan and cruelty free. No testing on animals. And I'm using my Function of Beauty hair serum. As you guys can see, it's super humid, but my hair is very silky straight and tamed today. So if you guys click the link down below, you guys can get 20% off your first order. Why not give it a try, give your hair some lovely nourishment. And I just wanna say big thank you to Function of Beauty for supporting creators for a while now. I just wanna say big thank you to a subscriber who emailed me about this case because I didn't know about it. Remember, if there's any cases that you want me to talk about, email me right there. Jessica Wenzel was 28 years old at the time and Wyan Myrna Saline was 27 years old and they were both college buddies. They both studied design in Sydney, Australia. It's crazy because I'm around their age now and I have a college best buddy and for those who've been to college, you know that college buddies are very like inseparable. Like you guys went through kind of like adulthood together. Both Jessica and Myrna was from a wealthy background and this is from their old college friends and they described Jessica as someone that was bubbly, goofy girl who got along with others very well. After college, Jessica decided to stay in Australia and she became a resident while Mirna moved back to Indonesia. The two friendship kind of grew apart as most relationships do when you kind of like have a long distance friendship and you guys are living in two separate countries. But it was two years prior to this incident when Mirna visited Australia and touched back with Jessica. It goes on to say that one day when Mirna and Jessica met up at a coffee shop, Jessica was dating an Australian man and she was kind of talking about her relationship to Marna and apparently Marna kind of gave some very upfront and direct relationship advice. According to Marna's friends, they describe Marna as being someone that's very upfront. Sometimes it could feel a little cold-hearted but at the same time she's doing the best for her friend by being very direct and upfront about some kind of toxic relationship that Jessica had with her then boyfriend. I'm sure you guys have one of those friends that's very upfront and direct with words. Sometimes they don't mean it to be rude it's just because they're friends and they're just kind of very honest. I guess one thing left to another and Jessica's feeling were hurt and bitter by Myrna's words. But this conversation went so sour that supposedly Jessica just left Myrna at the restaurant and she just left. Sometime around then, this is when Jessica's personal life started to spiral down. Whatever personal reasons that Jessica was going through in her life, she attempted self-harm five times in just one year. One of them driving under the influence of alcohol and she actually crashed, but she survived miraculously. Mirna's friends say that she grew worrying or even sort of fearing Jessica, knowing that Jessica had some issues that she needed to resolve on her own. So she actually decided to not even invite Jessica to her own wedding. This is when a lot of people believe the sour, bitter feeling turned into major jealousy for Jessica. Jessica's life was spiraling down. I mean, she was attempting self-harm and whatever she was going through. And Mirna, her best college friend, was getting married. She was really happy in life. And on top of that, Jessica wasn't invited to Mirna's wedding. In my personal opinion, I feel like someone like Jessica wasn't in the right mindset at that point, especially if you're attempting self-harm 
five times in one year. She was in some kind of state psychologically that was very dangerous to herself. Soon after the wedding, Jessica decided to then come back and visit Jakarta. And as soon as she did, she decided to invite Mirna and one of their other college buddies to a coffee meeting. This meeting was supposed to be at this upscale mall slash coffee shop. And this particular coffee shop was really well known for their Vietnamese coffee. For some reason that day, Jessica decided to buy everyone coffee. And there's text messages of Jessica first suggesting, what do you guys want to drink? The girl said, it's okay, you don't have to buy it for her. But Jessica really insisted that she really wanted to buy for her college buddies that she hadn't seen in a long time. This is where Jessica's behaviors seem really strange. Jessica arrives at the coffee shop at 3.30 p.m., which is 90 minutes before her friends was supposed to arrive. That's a long time that you have to wait for your friends. At 3.32 p.m., she's seen leaving the coffee shop and according to her, she went to go buy gifts for her friends. She returns at 4.14 with bags of Bath & Body products. Shortly after, according to professionals in the CCTV footage, Jessica is looking around the table to check for any cameras. Could she have been looking around to try and hide her deadly action? Would this be a definite proof of premeditated murder? What do you guys think? One question I do have is, how did Jessica know every camera angle and where it was going to capture? In my opinion, you can't know every angle unless you see the actual camera TV monitor. So was she just super lucky to figure out where all the cameras were? Then she goes over to her own table, covering the table with the shopping bags. You can see her moving the bag to cover pretty much the whole entire table like up front and because of that the CCTV cannot capture what is actually going on behind the bags. Then an hour before her friends arrive at 4.24 p.m. she orders three drinks, one being Vietnamese coffee. Professionals say during this time they do see her moving around but due to the shopping bags you can't actually see what she's doing. At 5.16 p.m. Mirna and one of the other friends arrive at the coffee shop and you could see them giving each other big hugs like they they haven't seen each other in a long time. By this time, their drinks have been sitting out for 50 minutes. Almost an hour. I mean, who orders drinks 50 minutes before your friends are supposed to arrive? I mean, if you arrive early because of your ride, I mean, you order your drink first, but not for other people, right? Usually. Immediately after sitting down, Miran takes a sip of the coffee, and in seconds, you could see Miran feeling very sick. She starts to wave her hands, wobble, and she seems very irritated. She then gives a sign to her friends that the coffee tasted and smells funny. And within minutes, Miran's head is tilted back and she passes out. Supposedly, then they get to the manager and Jessica tells the manager, what did you put in my friend's coffee? As if she knew it was exactly the coffee that made Miran sick. As everybody in the coffee shop was trying to help, according to the manager, Jessica seemed really unbothered. There was no tears in her eyes. She wasn't freaking out. She had a very old face, according to the professionals. I mean, your friend that you haven't met in a while just passed out in front of you. I would be freaking out. But, I mean, everybody does respond differently in these situations. Mira was eventually sent to the hospital and unfortunately, she did not survive. Mirren passed away that day due to poisoning. The cafe manager, thank God, kept that coffee because later, that coffee would be a vital evidence toward this case. The police and autopsy results concluded that there was cyanide in the coffee which ultimately led to Mirren's death. Cyanide is a poisonous chemical that can have deadly effects. According to professionals, even a teaspoon could be lethal. Everyone, including Mirren's family, her twin sister, friends, her newly wed husband, and including Jessica, all attended her funeral. And there's actually a video of Jessica at the funeral as well. The family was baffled. They were thinking, who could have done this? Police had their eyes on none other than Jessica, her best college friend, or once a good college friend. After a couple weeks, Jessica was arrested for the death of Miran, and this is where the bizarre trial begins. Jessica's behavior during trial was very odd, but in these videos, you could see that Jessica is posing in front of the media of, of people trying to take pictures of her, and she's literally standing there smiling like a celebrity. It seems like she's like at a red carpet event or something. When you're charged with your friend's death, according to Miran's family, it's seems as if she's truly enjoying the mass attention 
she was getting. According to Miran's twin sister, it seems as if Jessica finally got that center attention that she always wanted. Could it be possible that someone like Jessica really enjoyed the attention from the media because she did not get that in her personal life ever? Because Jessica was from a wealthy background, her family was able to hire one of the best lawyers in Indonesia and her lawyer was someone that represented the highest celebrities. To find out more information about Jessica's personality and her past background, the police actually went to Australia to interview Jessica's former boss at a place that she worked at. According to her former boss, she claims that Jessica had a very negative attitude. Not sure what negative attitude means because they don't go into detail, but the former boss continues to say that when she visited Jessica at the hospital due to her self-harm, Jessica told her, if I wanted to kill someone, I would know the exact dose. Jessica also even threatened her and her family as she disliked them for unknown reasons. It was also revealed that Jessica had a restraining order by her ex-boyfriend. So what was Jessica's claims? What was her defense? Because she claims that she did not kill her. Her friend. So Jessica's lawyer tried to defend her by saying that cyanide was not the main reason for Mirren's death and that Mirren died for other unknown reasons. They argued that according to the autopsy, cyanide was only found in her stomach and no other organs. So I think they mean that for cyanide to kill the body, it should be found in other organs, not just the stomach. The second biggest argument was that there was no physical proof that Jessica put the poison inside the drink. As technically, the CCTV never showed Jessica in action of pouring something into the coffee. Well, technically it was blocked by the bags and you couldn't see what was going on. They claimed that Jessica did move the coffee, but never put anything in there. Also another thing, because Jessica was arrested a few weeks after her murder, the police never found Jessica to have any cyanide in possession, which obviously probably if Jessica did this, she, she probably got rid of it that day. The trial was made so public that it was named the trial of the century. Throughout the trial, you could see Jessica having a very calm, I'm confident I didn't do this, and smiling for the camera kind of behaviors, which was odd to a lot of people. The trial took five months, and in the end, the court did find Jessica to be guilty of murder, and she was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Supposedly in Indonesia, the death penalty is actually by a firing squad, which is crazy. But she did end up avoiding the death penalty. When the verdict was announced, Jessica was emotionless. As you could see, there's no tears, no freaking out, no nervousness. She's just super emotionless. Later on, the defense team had tried to appeal the case, but the appeal was also rejected. Some people are actually very divided in this case because technically there was no physical proof that Jessica has done this except the CCTV footages and obviously the odd behaviors of Jessica prior to this. The ultimate question that a lot of people have is why? Why did Jessica want to kill her own best friend. I mean, it's not like they had a very, very bad blood with each other. I mean, yeah, maybe your friend didn't invite you to the wedding or maybe she was very direct and honest about your back then relationship with your ex-boyfriend. But would that be enough reasons to have so much hatred and bitter feeling toward your friend that you had to poison her? I mean, I don't even know anyone of my friends that have that kind of bitter feelings towards me, but you wouldn't know that. Miran probably did not know that when she was stepping into that coffee shop that her own friend would be out to poison her. In my personal opinion, honestly, I do think that Jessica has done this. The fact that she arrived 90 minutes before her friends arrived, how she knew where the cameras were to block what she was doing. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to reply from me, remember to hit the notification bell. And if you're early to the videos, I am going to reply to you. Bye.